There are a few missing stars atop this particular Christmas tree as the Miami Heat hosted the Philadelphia 76ers on Monday night, but the result was the best way to end your holiday night as the Heat hold off a late comeback for a big win. Jaime Jaquez was the star of the game, and we'll break down his big night, who stepped up, and answer your questions on today's Christmas Day recap of Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on Miami Heat. I'm Wes Colbert, NBA media member and editor at allyouneed.com. Joining me as always, it's longtime NBA reporter and a man recapping all the games on Christmas Day. It's David Ramil, however you're tuning in. On YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app. Thanks so much for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Recording this on Christmas after the Heat beat the 76ers 119 to 113. Jaime Hawkins Jr. with 31 points on his Christmas Day debut. Bam Adebayo, 26 points, 15 rebounds, and 5 assists. Tyler Hero put up 22 points. The Heat came back from 10 down early in this one. They led by as many as 21. The game was close at the end. But Jaime, Bam, and Duncan Robinson helped them put the game away in the fourth quarter. Uh, no Jimmy Butler, no Joel Embiid in this one. But, David, what stood out to you about this game? I think it was just that. I think it was a matter of trying to figure out your identity without your stars. And as we've said all season long, Miami's depth has been such a big strength for this team. And they've gone through a number of games without Jimmy, without Bam, without Tyler, always trying to figure out who they are. And while Philadelphia was able to mount that late comeback, I think Miami was much better suited for trying to figure out exactly who they are without these players missing and next band up, figuring it out. And Jaime just being able to dominate and get his twist spots, especially at the rim, using that variety of spin moves, his transition game, everything was dialed up for him. So I think it was just a, a kind of more egalitarian offense. You don't have to work through Jimmy as much. It was much more free-flowing to a certain degree. But I think it was also kind of, you know, on the fly. That's why it looked so sloppy early on without Jimmy trying to mm. set the pace and kind of slow things down. But overall, I'd say it was still a very strong showing for Miami, even though I don't know how differently this game would have gone had Tyrese Maxey not had perhaps his worst night as a professional. And I know he yeah. fans don't want to care, really care about that. But, I mean, that's the reality. He's an all-star level player, or at least has been this season. And tonight, he really, really struggled from the floor. And it wasn't because of Miami's defensive effort. I mean, that was just – the kid was off. That's all there is to it. He missed shots, dude. Like, he was 4 of 20 in this in this one. but uh, And then 1 of 8 from three-point range, which really was sort of loud in this one because he would come off of those high screens, and yep. he would get a good look, and he would just miss them. You know what I mean? And with no Joel Embiid in this one, it was kind of a late scratch. It really felt – like, okay, this was an opportunity for Tyrese Maxey to take over. And and we know this. Right. The Heat have had a really hard time guarding fast, athletic point guards at the point of attack, right? Whether it's Kobe White, Anthony Edwards, like all these guys, like Terry Rozier, like these guys, like recently, they've had a really hard time guarding them. And I was like, well, Tyrese Maxey, outside of Anthony Edwards, might be the best one coming through recently. Yep. And – on a, on a big game and a big stage like the, the Christmas Day game is, um, but they were fortunate that they had many shots. On the same time, though, it's – I don't know. It, I, is there something to the fact that – and I don't mean this as a judgment of Tyrese Maxey. That's not – you know, that that's for locked on Sixers to worry about. I mean, but for Jaime yeah. to step up on this stage, a career-high 31 points on 11 to 15 shooting, 10 rebounds in a game where – it felt like they really need. He had offensive rebounds in this game. The Heat, you mentioned the sloppiness of the game before. Uh, yeah. The Heat had 14 turnovers in this game. The yeah. Sixers got 94 field goal attempts and 25 free throws. The Heat got 84 <laughs> field goal attempts and 35 free throws. Sort of even, but it was definitely more sloppy on Miami's side because of the, it was they were so reliant on the the free throw shooting and the turnovers, uh, or they were committing a lot of turnovers. But Jaime was just doing stuff all the time in this game. And he had the five offensive rebounds. And he had the one really big offensive rebound in the fourth quarter with like two minutes left to kind of save the possession and, and, and drain more uh, time off the clock. It just – when you hear about 
when you hear Eric Spolstra and his teammates talk plays, like the 31 points, I think the thing that a lot, like that's the headline in this, David, right? Like yep. it's Jaime Akas, the rookie, 31 points leading this game. But I, I'm like, I'm going past the 31 points. And I'm like, no, this dude made winning plays. This dude made winning plays, whether it was the offensive rebounds or the defense that he was playing in this game, the fact that he was closing in this game late, starting in the place of Jimmy Butler, that was a tough spot for a rookie. I don't care if you're 19 or 22. That is a tough spot. And not only did he make the most of it, he thrived, and he was arguably the best player on the floor tonight. Maybe it was him and Bam were really but, – but for him to be the leading scorer is huge. Yeah. I, I think we, we, you know, we talked about, I can't remember at what particular game, but, you know, he has just been so consistent. And the, when the three-point shot isn't following or when somebody, you know, he, what are you going to take away from his game? Like, that's the whole thing. He just has such a well-rounded repertoire right. and he keeps attacking the basket. He keeps getting to the paint. There were times when there were ISO possessions and he was backing down a good defender and Kelly Oubre. And Ubre, you could see he really wanted that matchup. And then he just puts him in the spin cycle, gets right to the cup, lays it up easily. And Ubre is kind of looking around like, well, where's the help on that? It's like, well, you were kind of on an island. This is right. what you're supposed to do. And, and it was just play after play. And then when it's in transition, he just puts the ball down. He's not lightning quick like Maxi or even like Tyler Hero. He just keeps putting the ball down. And he kind of just looks all around, surveys the landscape. If there's an open three-point shooter, he'll kick the ball out. If not, time to put the ball down. And he gets to the rim. Like, it's just – I don't know how defenses are going to stop him because at this point in time, it's just this consistency, kind of monotonous almost, but so effective at just being able to get to the rim possession after possession, drawing fouls, the spin move, the reverse, using the hoop and space along the baseline – like a veteran, and I mean, I know we keep it's Duncan Ask, isn't it? <laughs> or I mean, Jimmy Ask, not Duncan Ask. I'm sorry, I was gonna make a Duncan no. Robinson point. It's Jimmy Butler, Ask, <laughs> and maybe a little bit of Duncan Robinson Ask. I don't even know anymore, but it's Jimmy Ask, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It very much is. He, he's been so good, uh, and yeah, I think that is a star making turn. I, and it's, you don't want to, I don't know what's going on with Tyrese, I don't know if it's just a matter of feeling the weight of having to carry this team. I don't think that's what it is because, honestly, he's had to carry this team. It's not like Embiid hasn't missed time before. And maybe it's not necessarily in a Christmas Day game, but I don't know how much that really matters. I, I honestly don't make much of it. I, I I don't make much of it. He had a bad night, and it happens. Yeah, that's basically it. But for, for Jaime to do this, I know there, there are fan bases yeah. all across the league right now shaking their head and going, oh, the Heat, they've done it again. Whatever black, dark magic they concocted Pat Riley's basement, you know, that's all. It just keeps coming back with finding these new players to step up. But, you know, this guy has been a really solid addition to this team. So I'm glad everybody got a chance to witness it on a national television televised game. We've got credit cookies to hand out, uh, injury news to get to, and mm. some questions about some of the lineups and some of the shooting late in the game. But we'll get to that here. After this, I'm locked on heat. Today's episode is brought to you by our partners over at eBay Motors. They've teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. And whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire every week, we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. Let's see who Josh has picked out for us. Same as last week's eBay guaranteed fit fantasy picks of the week. It's Brandon Podjamski, who had a big game for the Golden State Warriors. Tari Eason, Grayson Allen, James Wiseman, and Malachi Branham. I get, we got to keep going with pods. Like, I mean, he's just had a, a very comfortable yeah, We game. really do. He's and Again, if you're talking about rookie poise, this is a guy who really stepped up uh, on Golden State on nationally televised game against a really good Denver Nuggets team. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That wasn't against the Nuggets. I, they're it all was. kind of blending in together. It wasn't against no, the Nuggets. It was, okay, sorry. Nuggets. It was the Nuggets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like kind of the only good thing going for the Warriors in that game. They lost. But yeah. yeah so I, I think he's just been really, really good. Had a nice performance. And I think he's going to continue to be solid in his role. Coming off the bench or as a starter, either way, he's going to be very comfortable. He looks poised. He makes the right play. He's a triple-double threat. You know, he's not going to get that triple-double because he's just not going to work through him as consistently. He's going to get his points, but he's good for rebounds. He's good for a couple steals. 
good for some assists, really puts up nice statistics to help bolster your chances with your fantasy team. So that's really what it's about. Yep. Any of these picks are great because Josh Lloyd from Blocked on Fantasy Basketball, he's going to help your fantasy championship, to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. I, I mean, who doesn't love their car? Who doesn't count on their car for so many things? Look, it's the holiday weekend. If you're like me or like family, you know, that I know, you're going from house to house. You're going from all over the place. You're witnessing, you know, going from people all over town. That's where your car is there for. You know, you depend on your car. You need your car and you want to keep it running as smoothly as possible. And sometimes you just want to take care of your car. You know, you want to upgrade something on it, maybe get a little couple accessories here or there. Uh, upgrade your your rugs maybe or maybe get some new lights or something you know a new little feature to spice up your car a little bit well that's what ebay motors is for with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly brake kits led headlights roof racks bumpers whatever your baby needs ebay motors has got it and with ebay guaranteed fit it's guaranteed to fit your ride first time every time or your money back plus at these prices you're burning rubber, not cash. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only and exclusions do apply. Welcome back to Locked on Eat. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. All right. It's another heat win on Christmas, David. So it's time for the tastiest segment. In Locked on Heat. It is time to hand out some credit cookies. We talked about Jaime Hakas Jr. a lot in the first segment. I think we got to pick up with some credit cookies for Jaime, some Christmas cookies, some gingerbread cookies. David, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think Jaime should probably get four. I'm kind of leaning there. I know that's a big number. Wow. But again, con considering everything that's at stake here, I mean, if you disagree, if you think you, I mean, 31 points. I can't. And yeah. I, I will, I will. I, I will say, look, defensively, he was struggling with Tobias Harris early, but I think he kind of figured his rhythm out as the game mm. progressed, which is, if anything, that's that's what adds to the cookie total is the fact that as a rookie, you're able to recognize, okay, this is how I defend this player most more effectively. And I think he did a really good job as the game progressed, uh, you know, trying his best against a really good player in Tobias Harris who's had a really good season. And it was, just, you know, you could expect him, like Maxi to pick it up when it beads mm -hmm. out. Uh, and, and really, it wasn't much of a factor. It really didn't matter much. I think the biggest X factor for the Philadelphia side was Ubre. But aside from that, though, I think uh, I, as far as Jaime is concerned, he had the big game, the overall game. I'm going to go with four Christmas uh, Christmas Day cookies for Jaime Hawkins. Yep. You're not going to get a debate from me on that. Like, he was okay. absolutely awesome. Not just from the first three quarters, but like I said earlier, he was making the big plays in the fourth quarter, the big offensive rebounds, the big shots, the free throws when they really needed them. Uh, the Heat, I don't know. It felt like they tried to slow down the game a little bit too much too soon, right? Mm -hmm. Like with about three minutes left. And I was like, nah, guys, just run your offense. And I thought Jaime got to the line, got some free throw attempts that really helped that out, like, kind of helped them close that game. So I just love the control that he played with too. You know what I mean? On both ends of the court, you mentioned the fact that he was able to figure out how he was going to fit in defensively and how he was going to make an impact. And he did. He had two, like, he, he was, he was really strong in this game. So, um, I have no problem with the four cookies for Jaime. I do want to talk about Bam, though, because I feel like we've overlooked <laughs> his contributions in this one. Uh, yeah. 20, uh, 25, 26 points, points yeah. 15, Please, sorry, yeah. 15 rebounds, five assists. He was awesome in this game. And I know that there was no Joel Embiid. All right? I get it. But still, he was the hub of Miami's offense for a majority of this game. And defensively, he did all the Bam Adebayo things that you expect. I do kind of wish Embiid played in this game, honestly, David, because I really do think that this would have been an opportunity for Bam to sort of make a statement as, hey, I'm here. I could do more than Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert just gave up 51 points to him the other night. I'm not going to allow yeah. that. This is my defensive player of the year highlight reel. This is my statement to be in the DPOI conversation. And because Embiid did not play in this game, this 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 game is just not going to register for Bam. But it was a great game for Bam, nonetheless. Uh, and he does he deserves some credit cookies for this one. Yeah, I, I think three credit cookies is fine. But I want to say that I still think that this game should be part of the defensive player of the, of the year 
highlight reel. I, I, I think he had these two monster blocks, great defense along the perimeter. You know, he was on Maxi a couple of times. He was on Harris. Like, he, he did his job and always does it so well defensively that I, I still can't take anything away from him. And, yes, I know you're going to discount it. Not you, but I'm saying, like, people in general – well, discount right. it because it was against MB. It was against a superstar. That's that the problem. Doesn't matter. Like, really? Yeah, I know. I but at the same time, it's like it's still such a strong performance defensively, and he did so much else aside from that. You know, offensively, you just listed his stat line. Just such a great overall game from him. So, I don't know. I, I mean, he he still had a really big performance. Like those two monster blocks. That was all on social media. You know, it, 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 I think yeah. they were highlight worthy. It doesn't really matter whether it's a good point. a beat or anything else, you know. So I, I don't know. I, I think hopefully more people will recognize it the same way as they did last year. But you're right. There's probably going to be a little bit of a factor of like, oh well, he's just blocking Paul Reed. You're like, who the hell is B-ball Paul? You know, it's not. It's not like right. a big name worthy. You know. Okay. Right. Right. I, I. I. I'm with you. I think it was a great defensive performance. I do hope that people recognize it as a great defensive performance. He had three blocks in this one total. You mentioned the two big yeah. ones that are making the rounds on social media. So, and like, again, def- like the Sixers are more than just Joel Embiid. They are mostly Joel Embiid, but they are also more than Joel Embiid, right? So right. like Tyrese Maxey did not have those lanes behind the point of attack defenders because of Bam, because he covers so much ground there. The cutters that, again, I don't know how much 76ers that our viewers are really watching. You know what I mean? People who are mostly watching the Miami right. Heat. But, I mean, they are th- – they're not the team that they were with Joel Embiid and James Harden last year. Even – like, right. this is a team that with un- – coached under Nick Nurse, cuts off the ball, a lot of passing, great ball movement. I mean, they are very – they're the best offense in the league for a reason. It's not just because Joel Embiid can't not score 30 points when he plays. So, like, there's a lot happening, and I, th- I felt like Bam snuffed a lot of that stuff out. So, it was a great Bam game. I, I think you're going to go with three cookies here. Yeah, I think three is fine. Uh, I think we got to shout out Kyle Lowry and Duncan Robinson, yes. too. I I, yes. I I think Lowry had a really good overall floor game, but he was just – in his spots, so effective. And a really nice – like, again, people are always going to gauge his performance and his productivity based on his contract. He's not $30 million worth of good. And maybe that's fair – but you, you, if you remove that contract and what he does, he's still so effective. Like he's so undersized, and yet still, even at his age, really good defensive possessions. I know there was another one from a friend of the program, the Kai's Duncan, that he he just tweeted out too, kind of showing what Lowry does on like consecutive possessions there, where it, he was like again on a fast break opportunity, somebody's going directly at him, and what does he do? He just pokes the ball free and ignites another fast break on the other end, and then he does it again on a back-to-back possession. Yeah. Like, these are just – these are really great defensive stoppages from a 37-year-old undersized point guard, and he just had a, he had a really nice game overall. He hit some big shots down to stretch, kind of settles everybody down. You know, when, when Philadelphia was making their comeback, he got a big three out in the corner – and really help kind of Miami build a little bit of a cushion, and they were able to build on that so that they were able to close out the game. I don't think they win this game without Kyle Lowry on the floor. So, for mm. me, I think he had a big game. You mentioned sort of the Kyle Lowry defensive special where he gets the guy in the post, pokes the ball free when the guy spins, and then kind of launches a fast break. The version of that on offense, right, it's Kyle Lowry gets into the lane, hits a little turnaround jumper using yeah. basically his – but to create space and then <laughs> kind of fades away. Uh, and he hit one of those in the fourth quarter too. That was really big. He had five points in that fourth quarter. Um, the other guy and, and the other guy that had a big fourth quarter was Duncan Robinson, seven points for him on two of four, yeah. three point shooting in the fourth quarter for the game at 18, uh, uh, 16 points. Um, it was, it was just another great Duncan Robinson game. Tyler hero had a nice game for Miami. Also uh, how many credit cookies for, for Kyle? Duncan and Tyler, what do we got? Oh, well, I don't have Tyler on my list, uh, but that may be something really? that we can debate oh, about. Get to that in the next yeah, I don't have him. Think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have got uh, one for Kyle and two for Duncan, or vice versa. Either way, uh, Duncan struggled early on. You could kind of see him, kind of feel the weight of every missed shot. But once he started getting it going late in the game, uh, you could see kind of that swerve. There was that one time where he hits a three as they're kind of building that cushion in the fourth quarter, and it kind of holds the position a little bit after he takes yeah. that three. Love that cocky energy from him. 
So I'm going to give two to Duncan and one to Kyle, but you could go either way on that. I'm a little surprised that you have Tyler on your list too. Uh, maybe I'm just a simpleton here, but he scored 22 points in a game where all the points mattered. You know, it was a close game at the end. But we get to debate the Tyler Hero thing in the next segment. Was he shooting too much? Was it 22 points? Just a symptom of that. We'll talk about that next here on Locked on Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They've got great last-minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guaranteed. Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying tickets. So many great features for you to take advantage of, and one of the ones I like best is the 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 viewing from your seat. If you go purchase something at whatever venue it is, let's say you're in town from an event or for work or something like that, you want to go catch a, a comedy show or maybe a game or something like that. You're not familiar with whatever venue this might be at. So you take a look from the app and you can see exactly where it is that you're going to be. And you know where you're going to, what kind of view of the stage you're going to get. It's the best. So you never know if there's going to be an obstruction or anything like that. No, no, no. You're not worried about that. Not with game time. And with their last minute deals, you know, you're going to get the best price available. You can check up to the last minute for a game that's already started or a concert that's already started. Get tickets at the last minute and they might be cheaper than they would have been had you bought them days ago. And that's just how convenient it is. You just want to sell these tickets and game time helps get those butts in the seats. And that's why you need to download the game time app right now. Create an account. Use the code LOCKDOWNNBA. You get 20 bucks off your first purchase. You might even save money by using the game time app because that's how cheap you can get tickets. Terms to apply, but again, you create an account and redeem the code locked on NBA, L O C K E D O N B A. Get 20 bucks off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to Locked On Heat. Thanks for making Locked On your first listen every day. Make sure you're on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. Thanks to everybody who sent in questions on Twitter. Using the hashtag AskLOE. You can also reach us on Instagram at Locked on Heat and via email, Locked on Heat at gmail.com. This question comes from Jack and it's related to what we were just talking about, David. Would you yeah. say Tyler had a bad game shooting? He had 22 points, but would you say that that's bad? Uh, he also went for added context. Eight of 25 overall, four of 11 from three point range. You declined to even give him a credit cookie. Despite the fact that he scored 22 points in this one, David, was it a bad Tyler Hero game? A, a little bit. I, and look, I, I know I've got a reputation as unwarranted as it is for being a hater of Tyler Hero. I just think there were <laughs> possessions there. I think there were possessions there where it was a little forced on his end, where there were, you know, uh, it, it was early in the shot clock or maybe even in transition. And he's just kind of hoisting these shots. There was one possession that I can't recall exactly what it was. I want to say in the second quarter where it was a missed shot from him and transition opportunity. They tip the ball back out. He catches it, hoists another one, misses him. And, you know, it's make or miss with the league and it's make or miss with Tyler as well. But you kind of wish that maybe he had found a way to get the ball to somebody else. And I understand what he was trying to do. Like within the context of the game with no Jimmy, he has to find a way to step up. Duncan was struggling early on. He's got to find a way to get the offense rolling. So I understand that's why he was putting up those shots. And you know what? They're creating opportunities at the rim too because when he takes those shots and misses them, you got Bam or Jaime or somebody else cleaning up the rebounds, whatever. I totally understand. At the same time, it's just, you know, when 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 Tyler is struggling to hit those shots consistently and, and below 33% is definitely a bad shooting night, I think his effectiveness just becomes so much more, uh, you know, it's just so much less and you can see exactly yeah. how – the kind of gunning repeatedly takes some of the, the the verve out of this offense. So sometimes I get accused too much of being a Tyler defender, and I understand that. And, and I probably it's probably going to happen again here. But somebody had to take the shots. You know what I mean? And and I thought Philadelphia's defense was good for the most part in this game, despite them having. Uh, no Joel and beat in this one. And the thing that hurt Tyler Hero is a lot of his baskets come off of the two man Bam Adebayo. Because there was no Jimmy Butler in this game, Eric Spolstra staggered 
Bam and Tyler's minutes a lot in this game, other than basically to start the game and to close the game. And so it was basically just Tyler Hero out there running, That's you know, point. pick and pop stuff with, with Kevin Love and trying to figure out things with the second unit. And that was a lot of his minutes. He played almost 38 minutes in this game, but a lot of them were basically with backups. So I thought it was just him trying to create in an offense that wasn't helping a whole lot because he wasn't necessarily playing with the best players for most of the game. So, you know, yeah, on, on, like I, there are some sort of run and gun kind of early shot clock stuff that he does that is loud and that you would prefer that he doesn't do. And I think that's the thing that sticks with a lot of Heat fans. They're like, wow, why was he shooting that 30 footer with 19 seconds left on the shot clock when they could have just ran their offense? And I get that. Right. And I'm not going to defend those couple of shots. But for the most part, I like that he's out there doing things, that he's creating shots, that he's making offense happen. And in off- in, 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 on a night where you were without maybe your best offensive creator in Jimmy Butler. So, and, and when he was playing mostly with backups and not with the guy that helps him run offense and bam out of bio a lot uh, in a lot of those minutes. So, um, I, I'm not going to debate the credit cookies thing with you. If you don't want to give him a credit cookie, I'm not going to harp on that. But I do think that it was an overall effective game for him. There is something to be said about just making things happen and taking the shots, even if you're missing the shots. Because the other thing, too, is I thought those shots were makeable. And if he goes 14 of 25, Heat fans are like, this guy's the second coming. And I would never trade him for anything, you know? So it's it, I'm okay with it overall. I'm okay with it. I didn't think it was a it wasn't the most efficient night, but I didn't think it was a bad night either. If that makes sense. No, I I, I totally get that, and and you bring up a good point about how he, you know it changes the the dynamic of what he's trying to create offensively without his running mate there in Bam Adebayo being able to share the floor with him as frequently. I also would have liked for him, as always, to get to the line a little bit more, and I think he was trying to sell some contact, and it sure. just wasn't as effective. Uh, you know, he did have that one shot. Where it was again, he has a couple of these almost every game. That ridiculous fade away from the Ray Allen corner there, like he's just like it was just that, that shot had no business going in, and then Tyler nails it. It's kind of like oh, okay. and it did. You take that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so you know, without a couple shots, maybe going either way. Like if he doesn't hit those crazy right. shots, you know, you maybe you think so. You know, his game was so much worse. But then again, if he hits a couple of more of those crazy shots that he did take, you'd probably be totally fine with his performance. That you kind of just have to live and die with what Tyler is. He's a, he's a strange, weird th- balance of weird shots that are very, very high end difficulty shots, you know, and that's just the way it is with him. So, uh, you know, maybe but when they go uh, again, in, the, the, just, the, I mean, yeah, when he made the Ray yeah. Allen shot from the corner. You're just like, guys, the amazing, like, you're, you just throw your hands up. And yeah, you're like, ridiculous. What can't this guy do? Right. And it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, last thing here, Kayla Martin exited this game early with an ankle sprain. Uh, are you concerned, David? Yeah, I, I mean, again, I, I know that uh, Miami's next man up mentality has really helped them in the past, but I, I assume that Jimmy Butler will be fine as as uh, the Heat embark on a nice long road trip. Unfortunately, they're going to be going to Golden State, Los Angeles, et cetera. They're going to have a few stops along the way and out west. Utah. And you'd love to have, yeah, you'd love to have Kayla out there for that. Uh, Haywood Highsmith was out of today's game. No Josh Richardson either. You hope that they'll be able to return at some point. I don't know. We don't have any prognosis, nor will we, on Caleb's injury anytime soon. You hope that he's available to play at some point during the West Coast road trip because he's been finding his groove uh, offensively and, and defensively. It's still been a piece of work for him, but I think I think overall he's still been trying to bounce back from the knee injury that took him out over the the first few games of the season. But you know, I, I uh, you know I, I don't know. It depends on how the rest of the roster is as far as their health level is concerned, because you need a guy like Caleb and the versatility that he provides in both offense and defense. You nailed it, right? It would be one thing if Caleb got hurt, but Jimmy Butler was healthy. Haywood Highsmith was healthy. Like it would, be, but the fact that all your, 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 your strong, you know, power, I, I'm not even trying to say power forwards in the sense of you play the four, but just like your strong forwards, yeah. the guys that are able to guard these other yeah. top wings are injured. It's it's problematic for Miami. So uh, we'll get more information on Caleb Martin hopefully here soon. Hopefully Jimmy Butler is able to come back. Soon. I'm surprised he didn't play in this game, honestly, David. I thought I, he would, yeah. I think you are too, yeah. So um, maybe not the best sign 
for this injury that was originally labeled day to day. I guess we'll see if he's going to miss more time. It's been three games off now in a row for Jimmy Butler and then the Haywood Highsmith thing as well. He just keeps kind of coming in and out of the lineup. But Caleb was basically starting even when this team was healthy. It seemed like he may have right. become sort of the starting power forward for this group. So, you know, you, you hate to see him go down early. He played basically eight minutes in this game and, and wasn't making much of an impact before that, uh, quite frankly. So we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully that he can get here uh, fully healthy soon. But yes, I don't know. I guess maybe you can never really expect that with this team either. So we'll see what happens. But thanks for listening to Locked On Heat on Christmas. Uh, hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcast app, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel.